The gunshot explodes in my ears, the bullet hitting the door only inches from my head. And although I'm sitting on the floor, I actually jump, letting loose a terrified gasp. I'm scared, Jesus, I'm scared. Tell me the truth, or the next bullet takes you, demands a gunman. He's standing barely two meters from me, the smoking pistol pointing at my head. His eyes are alive with hatred and anger, and I know that he means what he says. He will kill me. It is the truth, I tell him, with more confidence than I'm feeling. Bullshit, he snaps, his hand, gun hand steady. Last chance, I will kill you without question. The room stinks of death. A man lies sprawled against the kitchen unit opposite me. His face and body a mask of blood. He doesn't move, nor does the woman lying on her side beside the gunman. A pool of thick, dark blood is slowly forming around her head, where a bullet from the very same gun now pointed at me blew a hole the size of a golf ball in it only a few minutes ago. I open my mouth to speak. No, I'm going to have to give this man the information he's looking for, even though it will cost me everything. And then I hear it. The sound of the back door to the house being kicked open, followed by angry shouts of armed police as they come running down the hall. I am a police officer, a man calls out from just outside the door. There is no need for anyone to get hurt. It's not what you think, the gunman staring down at me calls back. I'm a police officer too. Then we can sort this out, says the other man. The next second they're in the room, two men in plain clothes, their guns pointed at the gunman covering me. Put your weapon on the floor now, says one on the left, nice and slowly. It's not what you think, the gunman repeats, his voice tight with tension, never taking his gun or his gaze from me. It doesn't matter what I think, says the one on the left, you need to lower your weapon now. Nothing happens. I have my hands in the air, the expression on my face one of total fear. My heart is hammering away in my chest and I feel like I'm gonna faint. Drop the weapon now. The gunman doesn't move. I said drop the fucking weapon. The gunman's finger tightens on the trigger. If you shoot me, my last bullet takes her out, he says. And that's when I know I'm gonna die. The Witness is a fast paced thriller set over a very short space of time. The witness in question uh, witnesses the murder of her lover um, and his, his torture as well. And she, hear, she gets a snippet of information um, that tells her that there could be an impending terrorist attack somewhere in the UK. The killer sees her, she manages to escape, but she, gives, she then has to go into hiding. And so we follow her on the one hand and we also follow the hunt to find the terrorist cell um, over literally the period of a day. Um, by Ray Mason, who's a, a new detective character of mine, uh, quite an interesting guy, I like, to, I like to think. And it just sort of moves very, very much towards a, a major, dangerous, violent, bloody climax. Um, but I think it's, it's full of a number of twists and turns, and I think there's one particular twist that I like to think people aren't going to spot. So, um, yeah, I, if you like my books, you'll like this one. The idea for <clears throat> the character Ray Mason... Um, he came from a number of sources, really. I mean, he's kind of based on a couple of detectives I know, but I, I, I just wanted to create a new... I've, I've had some good police characters in the past, but I wanted to create someone new and just with a bit of an interesting background and who had elements of people that I know in, in the police, um, but also was kind of like someone who you know is going to be a really, really good guy, but he will do maybe not some not so good things to get the right result. So I, he just sort of developed in my head over a number of years and I, and I built the story of the witness uh, around him to introduce him as, as probably my serious character going forward. But he's kind of like a, a sort of classic good cop that he wants to see justice done, but he is, he's, he's had some run-ins in the past before and he's quite an enigmatic character. People don't, um, people don't warm to him, he's an orphan, um, so he lost his parents at a very young age, but he also had a lot of independent family wealth. So he's richer than a lot of cops and people don't trust him. And sort of there's a, there's a sort of hint of, not corruption, but there's a hint of something not being quite right about him. I mean, obviously because The Witness is, deals with terrorism, it's, uh, there's quite a lot of research and quite a lot of speaking to counter-terrorism officers involved um, in, in the, the build up to the book and in the planning of the book. So. Yeah, I mean, in a way, I wouldn't say it's inspired by real events, but, but, but yes, uh, the, the real events, the, the danger of the, the, the world of terrorism that we see now is very much a part of the book. And yes, I mean, uh, I, I'm very much influenced by that when I'm writing the book and obviously influenced by talking to the counter-terrorism officers who are dealing with this kind of situation every day. The most interesting thing I came across while researching The Witness um, was probably 
the number of terrorism plots and the number of individuals currently being watched within the UK, there are plots happening all the time. Um, anyone, you know, often very, very low in terms of their gestation and things haven't really moved along, but there's a lot of people trying to cause a terrorist outra outrage. And that was interesting and quite scary. Although luckily, I'm told that um, the caliber of the individuals looking to carry out the uh, another atrocity like the Nice or the Paris is not very good. They do tend to, and a lot of these people, they aren't superhuman. This is one of the, this is one that I find very, very interesting about a lot of research in books. You know, we often write about, and we often like to read about like sort of very, very clever master, criminal masterminds that uh, involve themselves at, in all kinds of shenanigans and, and you can never quite sort of catch them and it's, it takes a lot. But actually most criminals aren't like that at all. And they do tend to make mistakes the whole time. So although it's quite scary to think that there's a lot of bad people out there looking to do harm to all of us, it's quite reassuring to know that the caliber of the people going after them is very high and the caliber of them is very low. So I hope that that will keep us safe for, for years to come. I think the only way to keep the readers on their toes in any book is to spin a good yarn, to tell a good story and to tell it quickly. Um, I mean, I don't like when I'm writing or even when I'm reading, I, I don't like uh, to have to spend a lot of time getting into a book. I don't think anyone likes that these days. I mean, you know, we live in a, the age of sort of fairly short attention spans. So you've got to get the reader in hook. So you've got to have a good, good opening and then you've got to plan the book out in such a way it's just as everyone thinks, yeah, 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 you're yeah, moving along, I've got, the, I've got the hang of this book. You, you change things, you move things around. You try to keep an element of mystery all the way through. So no one is ever entirely sure that what is happening is actually happening and you know, it's gonna go the way. So you, you kind of, it's gonna go the way they expect. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's hard, but it takes a lot of planning. I tend to write a very, very detailed plan, which is about usually about 50, 60, 70 pages in length uh, before I even put, you know, pen to paper. And that takes me about three months. And that is the most important thing to me. So for every chapter, I know what's gonna happen. So I like to end with cliffhangers as much as humanly possible. So, and that's, that really is the key to, I think, writing a good book, just keeping an element of mystery and just keeping a story moving. But it ain't easy. I've been wanting to start a new series for a long time. I mean, my books, um, have tended to be a sort of very, very loose series with characters coming in and out and, you know, never like having a stand, I've never had a standard series character. And I, and I had an idea for a book, uh, well, in fact, a series of books with one storyline. I, I was kind of influenced by uh, the American TV box sets and I wanted to write a story that, where you would finish a, the, each book at a sort of satisfactory ending, but the story would continue. You knew there were other bad people out there that need, be, be, need to be caught. Now, I've had this idea for probably three or four years, <clears throat> and then I, and I slowly developed it, um, and then I wrote The Witness, which is kind of the precursor to the series, but introduces Ray Mason. Um, so obviously I came up with the character of Ray, and now, and now I'm starting from after The Witness, the new series is, you know, starts with the next book, The Bonefield, and it's, yeah, it's, it's been something I've, I've wanted to do for a long, long time. And I think it's always nice to, to, to have a series. I think people, the readers love it. But also I do like the idea of, of kind of having one book follow another and sort of just keep the series going and create a bit of word of mouth. So I'm hoping, um, you know, I hope it's gonna do well. Well, Ray Mason is, is gonna be featuring very heavily um, in the, the coming series. Um, I had this sort of idea, I, I'm, I'm introducing um, a number of uh, my older characters into the Bonefield and the books beyond. And I've kind of, having been watching Game of Thrones quite a lot in the last few years, I've, I've, I'm quite keen to kill off quite a few of my series characters uh, over the course of it. Whether I do or not, I don't know. But Ray is, he for me, is, is going to be the sort of single integral point. He's up against... Um, some very, very dark forces in the bone field and beyond, so, uh, some very, very well-organized criminals. And he's also got a number of enemies in the police uh, department where he works. And, you know, he's pretty much assailed from all sides. So he's gonna suffer, Ray Mason is gonna suffer for, in the bone field, he does suffer in the bone field, and he's gonna suffer in the books beyond. But I'm, yeah, well, I can't even tell you if he's gonna even make it out the other side, but you will see a lot more of him in, in, the, in the coming books, definitely.